Hello everyone, welcome back. Today is Tutorial Thursday and for those of you who are in love with fall and especially Thanksgiving that this is the mini tutorial for you. I went ahead and decided to recreate one of my manis from last year for you guys that was very popular with one minor change. So this is the mani I did last year for Thanksgiving and the minor changes is instead of leaves underneath our pumpkin pie here we have um, swirls instead. So this is the mani I had done and instead of leaves underneath we did swirls this time and I used a different matte top coat that I'm not um, not sure how I feel about it. I used OPI matte top coat last time and this time I use Sally Hansen gel like. Um, I don't I don't know how I feel about it guys. Um, but yes, this is the Manny I did last year for Thanksgiving. And it's just a lovely pumpkin pie themed manicure. Now you can do it with two plates instead of three if you do it the way I did it before with the leaves underneath. Um, I I kind of like it with the swirls more I think um, but either way it still looks nice. I already have a set of tips prepped out, sized, and pre-painted with the base color which is this right here which is called Studio 54P134 from Maniology. And it took about three to four coats to get opacity and I used such a Vite over top of it to help with the drying process. I also used Smudge Free Top Coat from Maniology, Sticky Base from Maniology. Um, let's go ahead and zoom this back out so you guys can see better. Um, and this is the matte top coat I used and like I said I'm not I'm not sure how I feel about it if you want to look more like what was in the picture from last year this is the matte top coat I used then which is OPI matte top coat though I've been having problems lately with white spots forming in it and I don't know if it's because I'm putting too many layers too quickly or what the problem is so um, maybe it just didn't like the chemical formula of the smudge free I'm not sure um, but I decided I was gonna test a different one that was a little cheaper and I'm not so sure how I feel about it I might go back to OPIs so with that being said um, use your preference and you could even leave it glossy I actually liked this glossy as well not just excuse me not just in matte form if you hear me burping a lot, I apologize. I'm not having the grandest of days. I'm on antibiotics again, yay. Um, I had a fast moving UTI, so I had to get antibiotics again and it upset my stomach horrendously this morning and set me back today. Hence the reason you probably hear my youngest in the background as well as the dishwasher. I apologize. The room that all of my Manny stuff in is probably not the best place for filming. I have the laundry room on the other side of one wall and I have the kitchen on the other side. Um, so there's, and I also have the door to the outside. So if, if my husband comes home early, then that would be heard too. So it's just kind of, I apologize for any extra noise that may or may not be there. So we're going to start by going over the products used. Um, I used three different plates, one of which is a subscription plate. So if you do not have it, they do still sell it on their site, but you would have to be a subscriber um, in order to purchase this plate. And um, you can purchase it and then unsubscribe. You can just subscribe for one month and purchase it if you wanted. Um, 
or you can get it secondhand on a buy sell trade group. But this is MXM 066. This was from two years ago. And like I said, it is still available. They haven't sold out yet. And we use it for just this one image right over here in the corner for the pumpkin pie. This one is available regularly. It's not a sister not a subscription plate. Sorry, I cannot speak today. And it's M334. Um, and I believe it came out last year, and that's what prompted me to do the pumpkin pie. Manny, I'm trying to adjust the lighting so it's not so hard to see stuff. And then the optional plate, the one that I did the swirls with instead of the leaves, is M357, and it's this swirls plate, and I used these top no, sorry, I used these two underneath the top swirls. Um, but what I had originally used was this leaf pattern right here with the same red that I colored the leaves in with this pumpkin pie image instead. So if you don't want to use this swirls plate, you can just do a quick swipe of the red polish, which I will go over that in a second, and put that underneath instead. Okay, so on to the stamping polishes, and which is what I use to fill in even. So we have Marmalade B214 from Maniology. It's a nice bright orange. We have Cocoa B351. These are all Maniology polishes. We have Orange Dream B377. We have Gold Rush B333, Coconut B268, Latte B331, and Red C B199. These are all the colors that I use in the process of this Manny. So why don't we just go ahead and jump in. So I'm going to go ahead and get one of our tips prepped. Yeah, let's do the, the ring finger. I want to be the fastest one, and we'll do the others afterwards. So we're going to go ahead and grab our MXM 066 for this pumpkin pie. We're going to grab Coco. I'm going to grab my monocle stamper. I apologize for hitting the stand. That lovely metal sound. Makes me cringe just about every single time I hit it. Okay, so take Coco, go over the image, swipe, pick up, and then this plate is done. We'll go ahead and clean it up and set it off to the side. Just in case we mess something up, we want to set it off to the side. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of tape. And I'm going to clean up this little excess around the edges. Okay. So here we're going to take latte, coconut, and marmalade. And these are the colors that we're going to use to fill in on the pumpkin pie logo here. Let's zoom in. So you guys can see it a little easier. And go in with the marmalade on the pumpkin. I'm just going to go and fill in this image. All right. I did not realize how loud my dishwasher is. I am so sorry, guys. <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> Okay, so that's all we need for that section. We're going to go in with coconut across the banner part that says pumpkin pie. All right. And then once we're done doing that, we will go in with latte across the outer edges like it's a pie crust. It's kind of like an actual pumpkin pie when you look at the color scheme here. You've got the, the creamy whipped cream type color across the middle, the pie crust color around the edges, and then of course 
the pumpkin color in the center. It's kind of funny how that uh, panned out. I imagine that was how I planned it when I did it the first time around. It was well thought out and not me copying myself. Okay, so now we're going to go in with Latte. Around the edges. Which has a nice golden pie crust feel to it. All right, and that's nice and filled in. We're gonna let that dry for just a moment. Now, while we are waiting for that to dry, we're gonna go in and we're gonna grab our fall gradient plate, the M334, and we're going to pre-stamp out four stampers worth on this pumpkin high gradient image and do four stampers worth so we can fill them all in at the same time. If you only have one or two, that's fine. You don't have to do all four at once. It just makes it go a little faster and a little easier. This is where we're going to take Gold Rush and we're going to do the outline and Gold Rush. Swipe the polish at least halfway down the image before scraping. Scrape. Grab your stamper. And pick up. Some nice pick up. We're going to do that three more times. Pick up. Clean our plate. Do it again. Oh, jeez. I think my child is pooping. He's out in the kitchen grunting awful hard. Okay, so scrape, pick up. Make sure all of the image is nice and crisp. All right. Last one, guys. And then we'll go ahead and work on the nail tip. Okay, we've got all of that picked up. Our stamp that we just filled in should be dry enough to apply. Okay. And we're going to want to center that. And apply. There you guys go. If you time it right and you don't let the stamp get too dry, you can apply it without a sticky base. That comes with time. Um, more experienced stampers are more familiar with doing that. Um, but if you let it dry completely, you will need some kind of tacky layer in order to, whether it be a quick dry top coat or sticky base polish, whatever, you will need that in order to transfer the stamp. Okay, so now we're gonna go in with our swirls. And you don't even necessarily need to use the same ones that I did. Um, pick whatever ones you want. I think really any of these swirls would look good on there. These were just the ones that I 
decided that I liked. And in the end, I wasn't 100% sure how I felt about having them on there. kind of take that across the bottom like so there we go okay and now we're going to use the other side to take across the top like I said I'm not a uh, hundred percent sold on these particular swirls <laughs> but you know It's, it's done and done. It doesn't look bad. I I don't know which ones I like the best, but I do like the Manny as a whole. Okay, now that we have the opposite side, we're going to go in across the top. Like so. And then that nail is complete minus top coat. So now we're going to go in and we're going to fill in, we're going to fill in, clean up around the edges and fill in the images on our pumpkin pie slice gradient. It has little leaves and little pumpkins with it too. So that's why we have such a color variety. Um, come on, don't be difficult. Okay, so that part is complete. So we're gonna go in, I'm gonna grab a piece of tape. And then the first thing I'm gonna fill in is we're gonna take marmalade again. And the first thing I'm gonna fill in is the pumpkins on there. Okay, where's my tape? There it is. It's hard to see past my camera, guys, so I apologize. It's hard for me to see where I have my little tape spot stuck. And I'm just cleaning up the excess images that may potentially get on the nail. Unlikely, but not impossible. And for that reason, I'm just not taking the chances. I don't want to have to refilm all this and redo it all over again. I've already had a rough morning and I'm rapidly running out of time for release date. So, and I was almost two weeks ahead. <laughs> what I get for getting an infection right because I'm literally on my last day of antibiotics so I have been busy with the kids it's holiday belt season kind of thing we have both my boys are winter babies one was right before Christmas and the one's right after Christmas. So I am not only preparing for the normal holiday season right now, I am preparing for birthdays too. And we host all of the holiday meals because if one of the kids were to get sick, we don't want them to miss out on a holiday meal because other people are staying away. And that's one of their favorite things every year. And so to keep my elderly grandparents and my great-grandmother um, healthy if one of the kids were to get sick. At least I'm not screwed out of a meal. <laughs> so, because that's, we had that happen one year and thank goodness the Chinese place was open because we weren't sure what we were gonna do because we made sides instead of the main and never again. <laughs> Never again. We just host every year, being the one with the kids and having the most volatile schedule and health issues. It's just, it's better that way. And my family understands. Okay, so we're going to take the marmalade and our detail brush. There's a bunch of little pumpkins. And there we go. Okay. 
I just want to fill in all these little pumpkins. enough polish on there. That's okay. We can fix that. Alright. So, obviously not all of these are going to transfer to the nail tips because the nail tips aren't big enough to transfer all of these images, but we want to make sure that we fill in the majority of them just in case one of them winds up on the actual nail. Ooh, I'm making myself go cross-eyed. That angle and lighting. Doesn't that help that I had a headache this morning? And, okay. One last little pumpkin up here. I don't think I see any more. Okay, no. So we'll on to the next one. And we're just going to keep doing this until we have all four stampers. Build. Okay, so as funny as this is, I find this marmalade orange more of a pumpkin orange than the actual pumpkin named ones I have. <laughs> pumpkin head seems less of an actual pumpkin orange than marmalade. I, th I found that really funny that the one named Pumpkin seemed less like Pumpkin. It's okay. <laughs> it's just funny. Orange Dream does remind me of Pumpkin Pie. The color of it reminds me of Pumpkin Pie. And that is why I used it. Especially my Keto Pumpkin Pie that has some cream base in it. Um, which lightens the orange. Okay, so that one's done. Almost done with this color. And if you over glob on a, on a pumpkin, it doesn't have any major detail, so you can just use that over globbing on the other ones. And I just went with the line a little bit. That one probably won't be on a nail where you can see it though, so it'd be okay. One more little pump. Ah! Okay. We're okay. We're okay. Losing my utensils. It's okay. I'm having some dexterity issues today. Okay. Oh no. Okay. So I need more acetone in my cleanup dish. I ran out. Let me refill that real quick. Okay. There's that. So, here in the near future, I will probably start the winter manis. I may try to do one more fall mani before winter slash Christmas arrives. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. Um, and the designs themselves I'm not sure what I'm going to do because I have quite a few popular ones that I did in the past that all it was was just a picture and not an actual tutorial obviously since I have had this channel for uh, close to two months now but um, not very long so with that being said um, I had debated whether or not going back and redoing some of them on camera to show some of the popular ones to show um, how I did it. I'm not 
well, much like this one. I'm not sure. Um, what all I'm going to do this year, since I, especially since I have some new plates, it'll probably just be the new plates. I still want the new penguin plate. It's absolutely freaking adorable that Maniology released. It is a layered stamping plate, making it easier to actually make stuff with it. And I, I am in love with the penguin plate. I'm not going to lie. I'm in love with it. It is so freaking cute. Guys, like... I can't even begin to explain it. I'm an animal lover. For those who have been watching for a while, you all know I love animals. Animals are so freaking cute. And I'm I'm an animal person. I love bats. I love penguins. I love squirrels. I love deer. Like, that's just what I'm constantly talking about. Okay, so I'm going to take Red Sea and we're going to fill in leaves. So, yes, I am an animal person. I love animals and... Penguins is one of my favorites, and they are so freaking cute. I actually got to see penguins um, at an aquarium nearby last year. Around It was right around this time last year, actually. And um, it was the, it was mid-October last year, so it was a little over a year ago. We took, oh, my uh, brother-in-law was in town and we took them to the aquarium that's about an hour away, one of the bigger cities. And they had penguins. They had live butterflies too. Oh my goodness. And the otters were really cute, but they weren't really interacting like the penguins. The penguins were going wild. They were putting on a show and there was nobody like directing them. They were just having a good old time swimming around and showing off and it was absolutely adorable. It, it was. I was so, so excited to see that because the kids were loving it. And, of course, I was loving it. They were just so cute. So, I, I was very happy to see that. They had some really interesting um, fish. And they even had some oceanic ones. This is where we discovered that our youngest, who is... Um, nonverbal autistic uh, loves sharks they had um, like a giant tank that had a very large variety of sea creatures oceanic type sea creatures and one of which was a shark and there were sea turtles too um, and he loved it oh my goodness he was jumping up and down flapping his arms in excitement and he was just so happy. And this is the first time we'd ever seen him really show interest in anything. He'd never really showed interest in anything at all in the past. And no matter how much we tried, we tried all sorts of stuff. To try to figure out things that he liked. And so, of course, holiday shopping for him was always difficult. It was like, oh, I guess it's just more blankets and clothes because these are the things he likes. And, well, the only things that we could find that he likes. And... He was in love with it. So Christmas last year was basically shark themed. And um, my brother-in-law was actually here for that too. Uh, he trades off. He lives out of state and he does Christmas here every other year. Because he, he spends time with his girlfriend's family half of the time. And then he spends time with us the other half of the time. So, um, which is understandable, but like that, it was, it was really nice to see it. He was so excited when he tore into the shark theme stuff. Now he's also the one whose birthday is literally right before Christmas. Um, it's less than two weeks before Christmas. He's a December baby. And... So he gets the double slam. <laughs> he gets the double slam on there. And uh, he had a shark themed birthday party and he had a shark themed Christmas because they were all right there next to each other. Okay, so now we're gonna grab coconut. And the coconut is for the whipped cream on these little pumpkin pies. Okay, 
So we're going to go in and we're going to just dot in the whipped cream color on all these little pies. This is a very tedious process, guys, and I'm sorry. The end result looks awesome, but like it is tedious if you know you're gonna need a decent bit of time to sit down especially if you're not doing it on tips and you're doing it on yourself now you can pre-make this like the night before or some people say they can do it a few days ahead of time and then not be too dry to actually transfer but you'll want some kind of sticky base layer ahead of time on your nails um, before applying if you're not doing it like right away it'll be too dry to uh, transfer otherwise just go in with coconut on all the little whipped cream dollops on all four oh my goodness I missed one I thought I had enough and I missed one All right, so there's that one. We're gonna do the other three. Okay. All right, so this, like I said, this is very tedious. Probably going to need to soak in my bathtub after this. It's being hunched over like this has got my back hurting. It's been a day. Maybe I'll convince the hubby to let me get food out. <laughs> Instead of cooking tonight, we're doing well financially for the first time in a while, and we're not doing significantly, but we're doing well enough that we can afford to have a a break from from meal cooking. Plus, I did just make general sauce for him not that long ago, which is his favorite Asian cuisine. Yes, in lieu of being able to afford the holidays, I cook Asian cuisine <laughs> as well as Hispanic cuisine and Americanized versions, I guess you could say. I managed to find good recipes that taste good um, and it is much like what you would get from the restaurants. I don't know authentic recipes because I am not... Um, versed in it. I don't know anybody who who knows them that lives nearby and could teach me. Um, and my family is, well, very Americanized. We don't know a whole lot of um, non-American style food, I guess, is the only way to put it. Um, considered Wonder Bread, I guess. <laughs> we are very bland. But that's okay. I am branching out and learning more um, variety and trying to provide my family with better quality stuff. Better quality meals and um, things like that. And instead of your basic, <laughs> like your basic grilled chicken, vegetable, and pasta, that is almost every night <laughs> kind of thing. I try to uh, branch out. Now, my youngest, it doesn't matter what I make. I made a plain cheese quesadilla for this little butthead, and he still decided that um, it's not good enough. <laughs> he wants it as bland as possible for his food, and he, that still was not bland enough. Oh my goodness, this kid could not be pickier. I only just recently convinced him to eat chicken nuggets, of all things, just so he would eat a protein. So, yeah. 
For those of you who are struggling with kids not eating what you cook, you are not alone. I struggle with my youngest all the time. He is very taste and texture sensitive. So for him, like, the struggle is very much so there um, with him because of that. Oh, dang, there was cat hair in my polish and getting it out was very difficult. almost through on the whipped cream. Oh my goodness, this is so tedious. Did I feel that? I don't know. So this is such a light color that is sometimes, and this is such a small image. Sometimes it is kind of hard to see if you'd actually filled it or not. And I'm over here struggling to see it. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to come back in with latte again. And we're going to fill in the pie crust areas that's not automatically filled in with the stamp when you first stamp it. Okay. So we're going to go in and just line this sucker across the back of these pies. these pies we want to go in and line I need to do another coffee mini they they made another coffee plate and these colors are making me want to do another coffee mini I did do one with water marble but that, and mind you, this was the only time I was successful doing a water marble, water marble. That was an absolute nightmare. And took a lot of trial and error. I do not know why. I don't know if it's maybe the temperature of my house. I do keep my house... Um, roughly around 70 degrees um, because that is what is comfortable to my family well most of my family not necessarily comfortable for my husband um, he's probably the only one who doesn't find it comfortable but everybody else does so um, I don't know if it's the temperature of my house or what but like I cannot seem to successfully water marble. I don't know why. I, I really do not know why. The concept itself is actually very simple. And every time I think I've got everything right, it just does not want to spread properly or some. There's always something that does not work out well. So I don't know. I will have to give it another shot at some point in time, guys, and see if I can do it. Because it was really cool. I, that was probably one of my favorite manis. And it was such a pain. It was. It was such a pain. And it shouldn't have been. I, part of the problem is I don't have enough browns in regular polish. I know that's part of the problem. But like, come on. Why does stamping polish not work well for... Now, some people say they don't have problems with it on using stamping polish for water marble. I, on the other hand, could not make it work. Which is sad. Because some of my best browns 
for stamping polishes. Okay. We're we're in the home stretch, guys. We're in the home stretch. We're almost done with the most tedious parts. And once you're done filling in the crust, all you have to do is fill in the pie itself, which becomes a lot easier because you filled in the crust already. Okay. Okay. And thankfully these are stamping polishes, so if you go over the, the creamy, the coconut, it's not going to hurt anything. It'll just be a little bit thicker in that spot. Um, but you're not going to see it bleed through. Because these are very, very pigmented polishes. Anthology does make good stamping polishes. I can't entirely say that their stamping polishes were fantastic when the, they were a newer company. Um, there was, they stamped, they worked, they were easier to work with than regular polish, but some of them did not stamp well over dark. Um, and I still have some of them, and but they did work. And they were easier to work with. Okay, so that's all of that. Now we need Orange Dream. And this is the only time you're going to be using it. And this Manny is to fill in our little pumpkin pies. To make pumpkin pie slices. Come on, focus camera. Okay, so we're going to go in with Orange Dream. And we're going to fill in these pies. And if you're not as experienced with reverse stamping, please do not do what I just did. You will mess up your stamp. <laughs> I know exactly how deep to go in this glob of polish that I put on one of the pumpkin pie slices in order to remove the polish and use it for another section. That is kind of a more advanced technique. Um, you can put it off to the side of your stamper and use it that way. Yeah. Um, uh, here, a good way to show you is like so. Just put it off to the side to dip into and fill in and then just take tape later and clean up the excess. That is a way you can do essentially the same thing. Without messing up the stamp itself. Um, I just don't like wasting polish. <laughs> I live my life on the edge. Afraid to waste polish. Almost done with this tamper of pumpkin pie. So who all likes pumpkin pie? I absolutely love pumpkin. I know it's it's very basic white girl kind of thing. If you want to go into the stereotyping, but I love pumpkin. I, I doesn't necessarily need to be like really seasoned up spiced pumpkin pie like I love pumpkin and I do homemade pumpkin bread um, keto because I'm diabetic um, but a homemade pumpkin bread and homemade pumpkin pie and also keto but like homemade pumpkin coffee 
I, I love pumpkin. And generally, it's more actual pumpkin than it is spice. <laughs> Let's be honest. Uh-oh, battery's running low, guys. Apparently, it was not as charged as I thought it was, but I plugged it in. So, go find the battery. The external battery. Okay, so my camera does not like to give me accurate representation of battery life. Cool. Good to know. So, we are almost done filling in all the pies on this one. There. Three more to go. want to turn my fan on so bad because I feel like I'm roasting half to death but I don't want it to mess up my stamping. I'm debating whether or not it's another hot flash. So we're just going to continue on with the Orange Dream, fill in all of these pumpkin pie slices. Okay. I kind of miss my music right now. I always find when I'm doing my Manny is it's kind of like nice and relaxing to have some music going on while I'm doing it. Um, come on. But I don't want to get copyrighted or anything like that <laughs> for playing my music in the background. Because I don't own the rights to any music. I uh, sure as heck ain't gonna try to figure out how to pay for rights on that either. This stamp it goes a lot faster now that we're in this spot because once again if you get it over the crust or the the whipped cream part it's not gonna hurt anything it's just gonna make it a little thicker so filling this in is doesn't require as much I guess dexterity so what I'm looking for right now or caution like you just don't need as much caution because those other spots are already filled in. Okay, so next one. There we go. So, what is everybody's favorite Thanksgiving? food. What is it that all of you look forward to? Because we're getting close. We're getting very close to Thanksgiving now. Um, so what is everybody's favorite Thanksgiving food? I personally don't really know what my favorite one is. Like I said, I really love pumpkin pie. But in generality, most everything I really like. I guess maybe the sweet potatoes candied sweet potatoes or sweet potato casserole. It's a hard one because I really love deviled eggs, which we do every year. My son really loves deviled eggs. Um, my seven-year-old. In fact, my seven-year-old had a hard time when I asked him what his favorite Thanksgiving food was. The first thing he mentioned... What was it? I don't even remember the first thing he mentioned because he listed so many things off. Oh man, I don't even remember. But like, it wasn't corn casserole or deviled eggs for the first listing. And I was shocked. I was like, those are the things that you go for first. <laughs> but 
I don't know, like, I know my husband's first response would be the cranberry sauce. He loves my homemade cranberry sauce and has tried to convince me that I need to make it um, more than once this month, not just at Thanksgiving. <laughs> so, yeah, um, his thing is the cranberry sauce. Um, my seven-year-old was talking about corn casserole, deviled eggs, pumpkin pie, I think was what he listed. Pumpkin pie was his, was what he listed off first. Um, I don't know. He really likes the cranberry sauce too, though. He, he definitely chows down on that as well. And my youngest, the only thing he's willing to eat is the mac and cheese. <laughs> I have to make mac and cheese specifically for the youngest at holiday meals because he won't eat anything else. So. And in lieu of not having my child starve himself, because he will. He will starve himself. If he does not have the food of that he is willing to eat, he will not eat simple as that he won't I have tried the whole hunger method of oh they'll eat when they're hungry no he will not it has nothing to do with hunger it has everything to do with texture and taste and he does not like throwing up and if it triggers that kind of sensation he will not touch it and that's exactly what it is in fact we had an incident with a multivitamin chewable where the taste and texture upset his stomach so much that he threw up trying to eat it. But he understood, we explained it to him, we understood what we were why we wanted him to take it, and it made him sick. So, he, uh, he does try for us. He will try new foods. Um, but if it's just too much, and he nibbles, like the tiniest little nibble when he's trying to, to determine whether or not it's even safe for him to eat in his mind. So, yes, he, he will not eat unless there is something that he knows is safe. What he deems is safe. I wish I still had that meme. So funny. Our, uh best friend that's our children's godfather loves corn casserole like loves it he'd never had it until he started coming over to thanksgiving and other holiday meals um with my family and the first time he ever had it he was like oh my god this is amazing <laughs> where has this been all my life and they had a beluga whale on a like transport lift where they lift it up out of the the tank and aquariums and that kind of thing. And the caption was me being hauled away after eating all the corn casserole at Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, yeah, no. He, uh, he loves it. I'd say that's probably his favorite one. My family looks forward to Thanksgiving dinner every year. Christmas dinner, too. I always do a turkey for Thanksgiving and a ham for Christmas. Um, and if we didn't already go to another one of our close friends' family events for Easter, I probably would do a ham then as well. But we go to their family event. We don't actually have a whole lot of family, family, um, living nearby. So quite often, um, family events is, um, mostly friends, close friends. Okay. So that's all four pumpkin pies, all four of the stampers of pumpkin pie filled in. So we got all of them filled in now. 
So now everything's about to go very, very quickly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our sticky base. And we're gonna coat the nails. We'll start with the thumb. Get a nice layer of sticky base so that it'll transfer without any issues. Now, something that I saw in the Facebook Maniology group, so if any of you are in that group that are watching and you struggle with this, this is the time to pay attention. Um, if your base layer on the nail or the stamp polish itself is too wet, doesn't matter which one, be either one. If either one is too wet, it will smear big time. You will have big smudging and sliding all over the place. You want to make sure that this layer is just tacky and that this is either completely dry or mostly dry. And when I say mostly dry, like it ain't coming up on your finger dry. It ain't smudging, it ain't moving. This is still too wet. It's tacky, but it's not it's barely tacky. It's it's moving around still. So I need to dry for just a smidgen longer before I try to place it because if I place it right now, it's gonna slide. It's still too wet. It shouldn't like string onto your finger when you touch it. If it strings onto your finger when you touch it, it's too wet. So let it dry enough. Depending on how thick of a layer you put on will determine how long you need to wait. Now, I tend to put a relatively thick layer because I don't like the streaks it can sometimes put into the polish, so to speak. Like, when it's dry, it looks kind of bumpy because it's got streaky. I like it to be smooth. Um, and it doesn't always smooth out when you put top coat. So I like to do it. All right, now nah, that's the perfect tackiness. Okay. So I'm going to line up the bottom of this with the bottom of the nail and go up. And let's make sure. We have all the images that we want on there. And you can use the stamper head to help flatten it down. If you, as long as you're using spots, it doesn't still have polish. Help press it down. And if you're doing it on your natural nails, just do your normal cleanup process around the edges. If you're doing it on a tip like me, you're going to want to go around the edge with a little bit of acetone on a cleanup brush and just kind of like seal it down. You don't want it kind of flaked off on the edges. Um, that, that can cause problems. So, that one's done. We'll go in. Grab another tip. We're gonna go ahead and put a sticky base layer. This is my cleanup brush off to the side. That's my old one. I don't. I use it for cleaning up tips now and stuff of my cuticles because it's all flayed around. And my new one from the Box of Joy is in much better shape. So I use that one for cleaning up my cuticle area. So we're going to let that tacky layer dry, and then we're going to go in with our stamp. Go ahead and cap off the old stamper that I just used, because I no longer need it. Okay, the lids. Okay, so we just need that to dry enough. Oh my goodness, clean up. How on earth did I get that all over my cleanup brush? Okay, so apparently, <laughs> you see the spots there? I don't know how I did that. I made a mess of my brush. I made a mess of my brush. It's okay. Brand new, pretty much. Not very old. Made a mess of it. Go to me. 
Okay. <clears throat> so, get some of this stuff here. I will need more acetone in my dish for cleaning up the edges, probably. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna need that. Okay. Still need my sticky stamping station, so that's okay. Side. All right, we should be good now. Eh, nope, we're stringing. Still too tacky. Too tacky. <sighs> too tacky. I just heard the mailman. Cool. More bills, probably. Who else can relate? Is that all you get is bills, pretty much? It's all I ever see in the mail. Though I did recently take advantage of one of the sales they had going on um, and got some plates. I did do that. And I'm glad I did. I am so glad that I did because there was quite a few that I've been wanting for a while that was half off or last chance and was like three dollars a plate four dollars a plate so I'm glad that I did um, it's gonna make things easier for me and a good chunk of what was used to pay for that was from my ambassador code, which I do put in the link of all of my videos and, or at least most of them. I think there's a few that I need to add it in there. I do put my code down there. I am putting this on again and I do not know why. I am sorry, guys. <laughs> it's been a day. But I do put my code down in the description and you can get 10% off of Maniology products, excluding the subscription stuff. And it does work on some sale items. It doesn't work on the last chance stuff, but the regular sale items, it does work. So you can get even more off. Um, so keep that in mind, guys. And it does help me because when I get paid from that... All of that money goes back into products to help me provide videos and I try to get the new stuff that you guys are wanting to see, like the new polishes that you're going to want to see swatched or the new plates that just came out and you want ideas on how to do a mani with them or if you even want to pick them up yet because you're not sure what you would do with them. So that is a way that you can help um, yourself and me is by using my code. I know that there are sometimes bigger sales that you can get, but if you like this channel, you like the what I put out, please feel free to use my code to help me out. So that way I actually have the ability to buy the new products as they come out, because they do come out fairly frequently, and I can only afford to purchase maybe once every three months, if I'm lucky. And generally, the most I can afford is about 20 bucks. And they put out probably $100 worth in products every time they release products. And they do it almost monthly. So it builds up quick on how much stuff is out there. So I can't always afford to keep up with it, guys. And I don't get a whole lot of a kickback. In fact, my last payment, when that was from me using my own code, was a little over $15. So that is not much, guys. I don't get much from it but it does help. Okay, so this should be ready. We're gonna go ahead and stamp down. And I missed a little bit off to the side. We're gonna go ahead and layer that on there. There we go. Just like that. and put 
our sticky base. And I don't know if you guys can see it, but this is what I'm talking about as to why I put such a thick layer. See that? It dries like that. And then it's that weird shape, bumpy, lumpy. I don't like it. So I do put a kind of thicker layer on. I like it smooth. I like it smoothed out. I don't want it all streaky, bumpy, weird. That's why I do that, guys. That is why I do that. I'm gonna go ahead and stick the sticky base on the last tip and then we will hit the top coat phase. Okay. Did I even need to clean up on that? Probably. Yes, I did. I'm gonna move that off to the side. And I'm going to clean up this tip where it did go over just a little bit. That ain't too bad. It actually did, that one did really well. That one did not uh, have as much overage as I would have thought. And this mini does look good glossy as well. And so that's personal preference, guys. I don't... I don't always do matte. I just like the way the design pops when it's matte. I'll let you guys decide which one you'd like better, whether you'd like it glossy or matte. Um, and then press on. My sticky stamping station's not taking, there we go. Finally took the last bit off of my stamper. Did not want to take it. Oh, that's sideways, that's why. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the edges here before I grab the final tip and stamp. We have one last tip, which it should be ready to stamp on. And I'm not gonna go all the way to the bottom. I want some of these smaller pieces towards the top and it not be just all big ones. So I'm gonna do it kind of centered and press down. So it still has that gradient feel. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to clean up the edges, which I expected this one to have a lot of edge issues because it is such a small tip. It is for the pinky. I will not be wearing this for the title description either. Um, I, I'm not up to stripping off my extensions to put on the press-ons. I don't have the money to be stripping my product off all the time. nor do I have the time to. So, I don't, um, it'll just be a picture of the tips. I will probably wear this at some point in time, just not this Thanksgiving. Because <laughs> um, I got filming to do, but maybe in between stripping product off one year. It will get worn, I assure you. And I probably will take pictures when I do. Because I really do like this particular Manny. So we're going to go in with our smudge free top coat. And make sure you put a decent layer on and not too thin because 
course, if you do it too thick, it'll take a while to dry, but make sure you don't go too thin because if you do, when you go to put your matte top coat on, it will still smudge because you will likely have streaked spots where it did not cover your stamp. And um, I have had this happen or it'll like soften the smudge free too much and we'll just go through it and kind of like a, a bleed through. So make sure that you put a decent amount on. Now, here's where you can decide whether you would prefer this as glossy or matte. Because, let's move this out of the way here. This is the mat, guys. This is what it looks like matte. And this is what it looks like glossy. So you decide if you like it matte or if you like it glossy. I prefer it matte, personally. But I like it both ways. So that is personal preference, guys. You don't have to do, you don't have to do that with this Manny. It looks good both ways. Um, to be honest, a lot of the Mannies I do look good both ways, but I really do like the matte look on this. It almost looks like a velvet. Um, which is kind of nice. Alright, so, and then the final step. Take your matte top coat. I've got the Sally Hansen Miracle Gel Matte. And we're just going to go over it. I did two coats on the other one, but I don't think that was necessary. I think it's just, it takes so long to dry. And like I said, I did originally do it in OPI on the very first one I did. I like the OPI matte top coat, but I've had a lot of problems with it recently. And I do not know why. I will have to do some trial and error to try to figure out what exactly is causing the problem. I'm not sure if I'm sold on the Sally Hansen one. Don't get me wrong, I do like Sally Hansen brand. And I do like their Miracle Gel shiny top coat. I haven't tried their special effect ones yet. I have everything except for the sugar one. And I like the look of them, but I haven't tried them yet. I haven't had a Manny that's really forced me to use it yet. So, that's all you do. That's all it takes, and you, if you want to wear it for a long period of time, you do it on your natural nails. If you wear press-ons, you can actually do it as a one-day kind of thing. Just do it specifically for Thanksgiving and have press-on set. That's your personal preference, but that's all it takes, and that's all, guys. Uh, like I said, I do leave my discount code in the description and I would greatly appreciate it guys if you're placing an order with Maniology. If you remember to use my code, please help help girl out here so I can have the ability to give you guys the kind of content you like. I can't do swatch comparisons <laughs> and things like that if I don't have the product. So it helps if I have enough to do it. Like this last um, pay I got was for $15 and it made it swear I only had to pay $5 out of my normal budget to get a shipment because free shipping is after $20. So I can slap in a couple of polishes and a couple of plates and be able to provide you guys with a little bit of content from new products that's perceived. So, and non-maniology products, you know, Amazon stuff, like sometimes I, you know, that's another thing. Like, <laughs> I can't purchase if I don't have money to do it with. And budgets are tight, especially at this time of year. 
And if you think I'm joking, I have right around $200 worth of stuff in my cart on Miniology of stuff that's new. And it's not even everything from the last two months. It's not even everything they've released. I'm hoping that this next sale for Black Friday will be a good enough one that I can get stuff and be able to provide you guys with videos on it and not be a year behind like I am sometimes on purchasing stuff or six months behind. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have the money to get it when it's launched 98% of the time. I'm sorry guys. So that's why we're doing this instead of the new fall plates. But I do like this one. So if I hope this was helpful or in the case of those who are watching just for entertainment purposes, I hope you enjoyed it. And you know, feel free to like and and or subscribe. And until next time, guys. Bye.